How do you get around from point A to point B daily? Are you the minority that starts their vehicle every morning and hits the road? Are you the majority that walks a short or long while, then perhaps completes the journey with public transport? Our guest today will talk to us on transport and infrastructural development. But I must clarify before we begin that there are some areas under his ministry that fall under another ministry, such as the public transport system, in particular Zubko. There are a million questions around the new strategy under NDS1 to have all public transport under one umbrella. So, Local Government and Public Works Minister July Moyo has clarified that instead of buying buses and making them belong to Zubko, the buses have been bought by government through CMED and other private players are invited to join. Now this is where our guest today comes in, because CMED falls under the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructural Development. Minister Mona today will take us through government's plans to manage congestion. I mean like really manage it. Not the street kids Muna Samunyoma who self-nominate as traffic cops. Kombudzi roundabout. Oh, and the bridges that collapse every rain season. Too many lives are lost to road traffic accidents and infrastructural issues. So let's get to the bottom of it so we can rise above it. When I asked you to send your questions for Minister Felix Mona, Joel Gombera tweeted this. Hi, before we can talk of urban tolling, let's fix the potholes filled roads. Now I don't mind if the entire program is premised on potholes. The rest is luxury. The subject of potholes is felt not just by the driver or the passenger, but even the pedestrian. How many times have you slowed down during the rain season to make sure you don't speed through a puddle that you know could completely soak the mother walking with a baby on her back? How about the dust raised by vehicles being inhaled by the security guard cycling to work? On that note, why don't we have cycle tracks? Those civilians who fill up potholes with sand, grit, bricks and stuff, je de safety. We could spend an entire hour discussing potholes and every single road that we think needs to be fixed as a matter of urgency based on our route to work via school run and our personal needs. But ultimately, what we all want to know is when will our roads be a pleasure to drive on? When will trains be a viable and efficient means of transportation again? Where is our flock of Air Zimbabwe birds? Remember when it used to soar in the skies to London, Beijing, Dubai, even just Johannesburg? Rail, road, air and sea. We want every option. We deserve every option. Today we sit down with the Honourable Minister of Transport and Infrastructural Development, Honourable Felix Mona. How are you? I'm all right, Rebeni. How are you? I'm very well. So let's jump right into the Emergency Road Rehabilitation Programme. Okay. Um, do you think that, now having managed budgets, right, which is why I mentioned that, do you think that um, the idea of this, uh, our roads being announced a state of emergency has been an advantage for you. That if the president hadn't done this, you would not have been given the budget that you've now been given to rehabilitate our roads. What do you think? I uh, thank you very much, Rupeneko, and I'm actually grateful to His Excellency Comrade Emerson Dambuzo Mnangawka for that program. Mm -hmm. You know what, uh, given a budget, it's a competing factor where other ministers would want to tap into the fiscus. And by that declaration, what it entails means that resources are going to be channeled towards a specific cost, mm -hmm. and in this case for the disaster. And I'm happy that there is a provision so that when I then go to Treasury, mm -hmm. I'm given a first preference in terms of tapping into resources because it's a national mm -hmm. disaster. Mm -hmm. So I can say yes. It's that leveraged. Is, that, is, yeah. that was a good leverage uh, mm -hmm. to, to the ministry. Mm -hmm. I think um, the first thing we want to get into is what is... Uh, we asked on Twitter, right, uh, what people would like to ask you as our minister. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the messages were around potholes. So I think it is the best place to begin, all right? Uh, you came here by road mm -hmm. and uh, you travel by road often. Mm -hmm. about, you're about to drive out of town again. Let's talk about that. For the, for the roads to be called a, uh, what, a state of emergency, that's not uh, something to take lightly. It's very serious. Um, so what is your plan, Honorable Minister, with this budget to ensure that our roads are rehabilitated and what timelines are you looking at? You know what, Tarvene, because of that declaration, what it means is that we need then to, to stagger and prioritize our, our works. Mm -hmm. In terms of the rains that we witnessed this year were quite amazing and we must be grateful to the Almighty that we never used to have such kind of rains that we received in this 
uh, season. Yeah. And however, the other side, which is contrary to the blessings that we receive, are the roads that have been damaged. Sure. And if you look at the works, the portals that are actually there in a number of, and you look at the network of our roads in this country, they stretch about 98,000 kilometers mm -hmm. of road network. And we are saying quite a larger chunk of those roads have been damaged. Mm -hmm. And in terms of prioritizing the works now, the portal filling that you have talked about, which are the emergence works that we then needed to move with speed. And I'm happy that we are doing that. But however, there are some roads that are still under the purview of road authorities. Mm -hmm. So the ministry is not taking all the roads. Right? I know, yeah. Which must be in the public domain. I think that Say, must be yes, clarified. Yes. Right. So that there are certain roads. And the criteria is we are targeting public roads mm -hmm. that normally lead to some of the very important utilities, uh, whether hospitals, schools. Those are the roads that we are targeting. And what so give say, us an example of a public road yes. that you are in charge of. We can say from here, you know that there is Samora Mashel. Yes. A part of it is uh, falls under the ministry. Then you can talk of Harare Drive, you can talk of Kickman. Those are some of the roads that uh, uh, people are also asking to say, when are you coming? Masochan Lovu, Masochan Lovu Seke Road. Oshof, yes. Seke Road. Those are oh, under yes, you. Yes, exactly. Then the, the roads that go off that, that go into the suburbs, those are now under city council. Into the suburbs, right. yes. But the, the ones that I've also talked about, they were also under the purview of the minute of the city council. Right. But what we are saying, we then had to prioritize. And um, a humble plea to the people of Zimbabwe mm -hmm. to be patient with us. Resources are scarce. There is no way can, we can do all the roads one day. Mm -hmm. But I assure you, Reveniko, that before rains come, we we'll have managed to cover those roads. I like the yes. sound of that. So before the rain season, which is October, November, yes. um, we're anticipating that the major roads, you yes. would have sorted them out. Yes. Now you talk of pothole filling, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is something that's often discussed and debated. Mm -hmm. Are we at a stage where we need to fill potholes or are we at a stage where we need to redo the roads completely? Like literally start from scratch with yes. those earth moving equipments mm -hmm. and literally pave right from gravel all the way up. What is the best way to do this? That's the desired mm -hmm. uh, scenario, yeah. Ravenico to actually redo the roads. Mm. But now we are saying, because it's an emergence, we need to just uh, patch and fill those so that we then have a, a plan to then rehabilitate the road. Right. And I can cite a good example of Boshoff, uh, which uh, comes off Seke Road, mm -hmm. where we actually had to reclaim uh, some of the road sections, and then now it's open to, to traffic. Mm -hmm. And we are saying, given a budget, but however, we must take cognizance of the fact that we are under sanctions, uh, Ravenico. So we are using with domestic resources in our pace, where we are funding the roads. But in other jurisdictions, you find that roads are funded through external funding, uh, through banks. But we are saying we are using the port that we have as a nation. $400 million dollars is a lot of yes, money. Yes, which is about $32 billion if you then convert it. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. So what we are now doing is we say, but it's not adequate to cover all the roads. 100%. So, yes, so we also need to manage wisely in terms of the resources. So, so how do you prioritize that? Yeah, how do you sit now with your team and say, Totanga ne road e, Totanga ne city e, how do you? Well, what we then had to do is to then engage uh, the other provinces mm -hmm. to say we've got our structures, we've got our provincial development uh, coordinators, we've got the Minister of State in, in different uh, provinces mm -hmm. where they to then form committees. Right. But there is also an element of buy-in from the people of that particular area to say we've got road one two three four and this is our priority list we're not just imposing on people to say we are taking over this road mm -hmm. however if you then go to to the statutes if you look at the roads act 1318 it actually mandates the minister of transport to then be the overseer of the roads mm -hmm. and we've got four road authorities that will then people. fall right. but however ownership actually rests with the minister of transport mm -hmm where we are saying according to section 4 of that uh, road act uh, it actually empowers road authorities to take charge of their roads but if you then go specifically to section 5 it then gives the mandate and the power to the minister of transport to take over roads that are neglected mm -hmm. and we are saying now we thank god um, with the advent of the second uh, republic with the wise counsel of his excellency he then declared the state of disaster which then gave us the impetus to start working on the roads. So I can, so, yes. Did it, did it need the president to announce a state of uh, emergency? Because the other thing that, um, you know, citizens will always say, Minister, is 
Where is the money that we pay, for example, to toll gates going? When Zanara collects money, Anditi, when we pay our licenses, all of those things, why does it need a $400 million um, relief fund to assist you to fix roads where the money we pay monthly, daily, is supposed to go to that anyway? So how do we look at that? Where, what's happening to that money? You know what, Rufene, what has been happening in other cities, in particular city of Harare, mm -hmm. you know that the roads were not being maintained and there was an a, a sort of a, a statement to say we are not getting funds from Zinara. But if you then go to Zinara, they are disbasing funds. But however, when the funds go to the relevant um, city council, how they then prioritize is entirely up to those uh, city council. So we are saying we've taken time not rehabilitating our roads. Because the moment you, you have a road, you need to maintain it, just like a human being, uh, Ruveni. Yeah. If you don't bath, the next day you won't be looking this, mm -hmm. so gorgeous like what you are today. <laughs> But you need that yeah. continuity in terms of maintaining the roads. So what we are saying here is, yes, funds were being um, channeled from Zinara. And it's also another creature that needs to be cleaned, Zinara. Because if you talk of Zinara, mm -hmm. uh, councils are not, say, they are saying we are not getting. But going forward, Ruveneko, uh, this year, I've mandated Zinara to come up with a list of all the funds that they have disbased to whether it's local authorities in terms of city councils, rural district councils, department of roads, or DDF. To you. Yes, to, to yes, we, we oh. get, uh, the, also the, get we, we also get yes, yes yes. So we are saying each road authority must be accountable so that we resonate well with the supreme constitution of this country to be accountable to the citizenry. Yeah. So what we are saying is we don't want this blame game to say uh, funds were coming from Zinara. But the other element, whether it's adequate or not, but we need accountability yeah. of what is coming from the administration in terms of Zinara. So have you managed to put a hold on your uh, jurisdiction, the money that you get from Zinara as ministry to fix the public roads, like you said, the major roads under your purview? Have you managed to have a hold on those funds, a proper grip on those, and to know what's being done? Because obviously there was pilferage, isn't it? And there was um, corruption. Um, this is something that the Anti-Corruption Commission, Zach, has been trying hard to fight. So I'm sure in you entering this ministry, you had to also go through all those channels. So how far have you come with that? Definitely, Ruveni. Because if you look at a good example that you have cited, Zinara, during the First Republic, things were, uh, and even the, the qualities and the qualifications you were hearing in the audit report that some were not qualified to, to partake in the, in the roles that they were taking. The but officers now, yes, had people yes, that didn't yes. qualify to be sitting there. But once again, I'm proud to belong to the Second Republic. Right. Because the systems that have been put in place since 2018 are quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And we are saying now we need to take charge of what is happening, whether this is through Zinara and what comes to the ministry, we must be accountable. Similarly to the road authorities, other road authorities, mm -hmm. they must be accountable. So Minister, tell us about the road works that begin and then stop before they're completed. One would think that they have been suspended um, to be continued at a further, a further date, but there's been years where some roads have been lying in the same state for a long time. What, what about that? Uh, thank you very much, Ruveneko. I can say the issue of suspending some of the projects, it actually comes back to the issue of managing the pace. Mm -hmm. But we are saying we don't want and we don't desire to have a project that we start, for example, we just do the preliminary works and then not continue with that project. But what we are saying now, we've also identified those roads to fall within the, the emergence works so that as we then do the other emergence programs, we then partake into those projects that have been suspended mm -hmm. uh, pending the availability of funding. So what we are saying now is we then need to move with speed in trying to manage that we also finish and complete those projects. Is it not prudent then to start a project knowing how much it requires and start it and finish it instead of starting it then stopping because you're waiting for more funds? That almost sounds like, you know, whether it's mismanagement or whether there is something that then happens to the said funds. It's a bit concerning, you know. Um, another example is just recently we celebrated the launch of the Mbuyanihanda statue, mm -hmm. but the road is not yet open. Why is that? 
uh, I don't know whether I should answer the last question. <laughs> it's an example uh, okay. citing <laughs> this idea of projects that take a long time to finish. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know if it is a budget issue or what really is it? Is it management of the project? Is it um, resources? Maybe talk us through that because we don't understand. You know, it's project launch under statue. Why are we still not being able to drive down Samora Michelle and use the footbridge that's been created? What so you can use that response to answer maybe more generically for all the other projects and okay. why things start and stop. Yes, thank you very much, Reneko. But what happens yeah. whenever we go to a road, mm -hmm. we do the scope of works. The scope of works, what it entails is we, we need to ascertain the cost of that project. So like you we indicated that we are working with a 400 million budget. Mm. So like what, we, yes, yes, yeah. uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is the scope of works will then uh, determine what we are going to put in that road. Mm -hmm. So that we are within the, 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 the framework of that scope right. of works. Right. So basically there is no reason to suspend a project because it will then fall into that scope of works. Then we then liaise with Treasury to say we are going to do Samora Michelle and we need, uh, for instance, one million is, a, is an example. Then we need to work within that budget. So at the end of the day, there is no reason to then, but some of the projects that we are talking about were, were being done years back. And we are saying we are correcting all those anomalies mm -hmm. to say when we start a project, we need to just finish it. And we are saying the good example that you have uh, highlighted, this is almost less than a month after the, the Mbuyane under statute that mm -hmm. you are talking about. And I tell you that the Minister of Transport is also seized there so that we then complete whatever is, is pending, working together with the city of Harare. So I assure you that these are some of the projects that we also need to move with speed in implementing. On that, let's clarify the other issues that you work together with uh, Minister Moyo, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I, you're obviously referring to Minister July Moyo mm -hmm. and uh, his ministry, where the issue of Zupko, right? We can get into now public transport mm -hmm. because there are some issues that do overlap. And even with the tweets, with questions toward you, mm -hmm. a lot of them were talking about public transport, mm -hmm. um, which um, it would be prudent for you to also clarify, to say that under you, mm -hmm. Um, yes, CMED is now the housing of the Zupco buses, if I'm correct, you can help me here. Um, but we need to clarify, the public transport system here, Luanditi, where do you start and where do you stop? Because we want to know what you can speak to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, once again, let me thank you for that yeah. and for seeking clarity on that. The public transport system, what actually is housed under the Ministry of Transport? We, we, we do the permits. We do issue the permits. So whatever you see on road, it comes from the Minister of Transport. Mm -hmm. So however, the, in terms of there is a symbiotic relationship between ourselves and local government. Mm -hmm. So that whatever you then see falling under the purview of, uh, of, uh, of Zupco, in this case, in the arrangement that you have highlighted in terms of CMED, we're just facilitating in the provision of buses advancing to Zupco. Mm -hmm. But a good scenario would be to have a, a program that will then house all our bus uh, in terms of the assembly, which I'm happy as we speak today, there's a program that is ongoing for, for a company that is trying to facilitate mm -hmm. through um, government also to procure the kits and assemble buses in this country. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is we then work together with local government in terms of the Zupco and the Zupco caters for the cities. And as you then go outside the jurisdiction of the cities, you then have the intercity, you have got the buses that then ply other routes. Mm -hmm. Then that falls under the Ministry of Transport. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is, yes, this is a standalone in terms of the Zupo element, mm -hmm. but we are also concerned because at the end of the day, we are mandated to provide in terms of transport. Yes. We are also mandated to, to address issues of safety and above all the issues of client service in terms of accountability to the people of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying here is, yes, there is no way we can divorce ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there is no need of blame game, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Reveniko, mm -hmm. to say, no, this is, we are a government mm -hmm. and we take charge we of the years. Yeah. So in terms of setting up, that's why if, once again, to, to the wise guns of His Excellence, we're here to set up a committee to oversee the operations in terms of decongesting the cities, mm -hmm. which you saw in the previous month being uh, set up and of which um, Comrade uh, July Moyo is the chairperson of that committee, 
which are also uh, uh, one, of, um, one of the members of that committee, mm -hmm. together with Oma Phase, uh, Higher Education, ICT, comprising that committee, sure, sure. to then see how we can leverage on coming up with a vibrant, robust transport system in this nation. So for public transport, you spoke of the buses, then you spoke of intercity, and you went wider. Yes. Can we come back downscale a little bit mm -hmm. for the day-to-day, -day, right? Gatitao Renyaye Makombis, Nim Shika Shika. What are we doing about those? Because one, um, they have proven to be efficient, right, for those that use them. Um, although they cause a lot of havoc, a lot of accidents, you know, they were very much, a, I think, over the COVID pandemic, many people are grateful that there were no combis on the roads. But the reality is the majority of Zimbabwe depended on them to get about. So there's no way we can confidently remove them from our, our ecosystem. So what are we saying about those? Because they are still operating. As much as there was a clampdown on them, they're still there, right? The Mshika Shikas especially. So what are we saying about the smaller micro public transport? Because a Zubko bus can only do so much. There are certain roads, again, because of infrastructure, that a Zubko bus cannot travel on. So what are we doing about the micro? Uh, thank you very much, Sheriff Veniko. And maybe we need to understand the background of why we, we ended up having these combis. Mm. It was just a stopgap measure to say yes. Mm. And how then it then devolved the issues of, uh, in terms of the menace then that ensued after being uh, authorized to be on our roads. Mm. You know, the, in terms of not sticking to their time, time frames, in terms of timetables. And for your own information, they were then authorized to operate within, especially if going outside the cities, a maximum of 150 kilometers. And then 120, with 120 kilometers, you don't need a timetable if you then go to 150. But you then find a scenario when these combis would go beyond the 150. But the idea was then to just complement the services of Zubco so that they then do the, the, the smaller trips in terms of maneuvering within the mm -hmm. cities. Mm -hmm. But they ended up, you know, in terms of not respecting their ranks. So the menace that was witnessed was quite, um, you know, disturbing in terms of the peace, even in terms of the commuters. So these are some of the issues then brought about the issues of Mshika Shika, Yamurkutawa. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is, yes, they must come back, but they must come back through Zubko. So they also, can yes, come back. They can come back, back under Zubko banner. This is the monopoly, yes. though, that we want no, to understand no, no, as well. People are calling really, it that. People really. are calling it no. that. So and I just wanted you to clarify, yes, because people are worried. They're like, why do they want to manage everything under one umbrella? Why not allow for private entities to operate independently? But Veneco, it's just like you need order in any, any country. That's why we've got laws. Mm. If we say it's free for all, then we are saying if they cannot regulate themselves, they need some sort of regulation. So we are saying if they then come through Zubko, if there is something that happens, if there is a, a number that you can fall, you call in the event that you are not happy with service. But now, truly speaking, one will just import his or her combi, put it on the road. There is no accountability. If there is a hit and run, it's, those are some of the issues. Sure. So we are saying in terms of managing and also having order, to say, let them fall under. So to, it's not monopoly such. And um, I'll be engaging also the, the transport associations to see how they can self-regulate themselves. Mm -hmm. So that whenever, if you've got your vehicle, if you then join, I can give you a good example. A long time we used to have uh, Rick's, is it Rick's Texas? Mm -hmm. It was sort of a cooperative. Mm -hmm. And you would not know who owns this and that, but it was a pool of vehicles right. that would then feed into the services you could just call a number within a few minutes you get a taxi and this is some kind of order we are advocating Ruveneko. we are not saying this issue of um, monopoly and the idea of government is to then facilitate uh, so that we've got easy of doing things that we have and in terms of transport management i must just read a tweet um, from at pagiwa anele says why can't the government allow private players in the transport industry than monopolizing? Zubka alone cannot sustain transporting people from point A to point B. So while you speak of order, and I think we understand the managerial aspects that you speak of, right? And I think um, the, the, the onus is on us to put trust in our government to be able to manage the system well. But you hear these comments. I mean, this is just one tweet, but he maybe represents the thoughts of a couple of other hundred, a couple of other thousand. So maybe this kind of narrative to say, can you reassure us that the transport, the public transport system will be effective? Is this something that government can manage on its own? 
Uh, Ruveniko, this is something that will also, I will also concur with the, with the views that have been highlighted. We are saying it's, we, we are inviting players to, to partner Zupo. Yes. The moment you bring your, your bus to Zupo, it's not like it's, it's being taken by the government. But we are saying let's work together. Let's have this. The idea of coming under is just to manage. And for your own information with the committee that I've talked about, which is going to decongest, we are all actually advocating for dedicated lanes, and we are going to be implementing that very soon. Dedicated lanes for buses, also have timetables for buses, and you'll be, be yes, and you'll be seeing that. So that if we, I can just give you an example to say, Samora Masho, certain times you don't want private vehicles to be plying that road, mm -hmm. so that we then manage and facilitate the movement of the keys to their various schools, wow. those we are going to work. So these are some of the initiatives that we are taking. And we are saying, let's, let's partner. And and is, is this a 2030 is plan? Is this a... No, no, no. This is, this is happening now. <laughs> because the, when they say a different lane for buses, I mean, that's exciting because even yeah. cyclists, a lot of yes. them do not have a cycle track. Yes. You know, there's some neighborhoods that might have it. But um, that's something that I think um, in terms of world-class city status, right? Mm -hmm. These are the things we want to hear about, Minister. This is what we want to see for our country. Mm -hmm. We'd love a lane for buses only yes. where we're not fighting with them and, uh, you know, traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. Another comment here from um, at Tafadzwa Chak on Twitter mm -hmm. says it would be good to hear... Um, progress on oh, no, this is on nrz sorry another tweet here from at ben uh, murdoch right please ask the minister why he is silent on rural combis the local governance minister gave clarity that those that do rural routes are exempted from zupco his silence is fueling corruption law enforcement agents are feasting on us because we can't access relevant papers from him uh, thank you very much uh, Ruveniko. and i actually highlighted the issue of the rural combis mm -hmm that they are not allowed to go beyond the 150. Mm -hmm. So if you then see a combi after 150, it's not going to be issued with a permit from the Minister of Transport. Mm -hmm. And that is very clear. And the idea behind was then to then augment the service of those raw buses. But to then say it then goes beyond the 150, that's not something that they would see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I need to assure the citizenry that they now have to stick to the dictates of the, the issuance of permits which then falls within the 150, the 120 that I talked about. But you, you had also asked the question about when are we going to, to see this. Mm -hmm. I talked about the constitution of the committee that has been constituted by His Excellency, that we need to implement. This is what we are implementing as we speak, mm -hmm. where we are also going to be extending our roundabouts, where you have seen congestions, mm -hmm. creating the dedicated lines. So the idea of having this committee was to address the concerns of the citizenry. And I, this is not something that is futuristic. Mm -hmm. It's something that we need to then implement now. And this is what we are doing. And the, the committee, the permanent sectors from my ministry, from local government, they are actually seized on the implementation modalities. Yes. I'd like to go deeper on decongesting the city, right? Just now you talked about roundabouts and all of that. You know the famous Mbudzi roundabout, yes. for example. Um, you know, a lot of tweets came around that as well. And do you think that the average Zimbabwean is a good driver? Uh, that one is also something that is very important. Do you uh, think so? Uh, let, let me respond. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because why? why? You can respond in, holistically because why I ask you that question, Minister, is because we have some 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 issues on the mm. roads, right? Regards, be, besides the, 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 the increase of vehicles, mm. right? Mm. Um, besides the, 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 the lack of traffic mm. circles and traffic lights and all of that, mm. there is serious congestion right now. Then there's the average mindset of the Zimbabwean when a Zimbabwean is driving. Mm -hmm. I must go through that space because I want to go to point B. Mm -hmm. I don't care about anybody else around me. Mm -hmm. I ask this because we go deeper now to VID, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's a generation mm -hmm. of drivers driving around our country mm -hmm. who are licensed mm -hmm. on paper, mm -hmm. but in a lot of ways had to pay to get their licenses. Mm -hmm. Whether they could have passed that road test is another story. Mm -hmm. But my point is, there has been years and years where drivers are now with vehicles on mm -hmm. our roads mm -hmm. with licenses because they paid off a VID officer, mm -hmm. right? So we get to corruption because you might put roundabouts, you might put traffic lights, but as you see, there's still congestion at traffic lights that are working. Mm -hmm. There's still congestion at a roundabout. Why are cars not going around the roundabout? Four-way stop signs. That's a nice rule that we could introduce. So let's go back to the basics, right? The highway code, 
the getting a license, right? The qualifying for a road license, because this is all part and parcel of, of what I think our problems are as well. Over to you. If you go through uh, Traffic Safety Council reports, they say the, the most contributing factor is, is human. Right, yes. human error for, for RTAs, yes. correct. So I also need to concur with your assertion that, mm -hmm. yes, we also need to play our part. And I can give you a good example, that uh, if you then drive, um, if you ply our highways, you then see someone who is moving at 20, 30 kilometers in the inner lane. But it's clear that if you are not moving, according to the designated speed limit, just put your extreme left. But the moment you cross Limpopo into South Africa, the same driver would know that if he or she is not driving fast, you then push to the extreme left of the yellow lane. Mm -hmm. But here, it also comes with the issue of, issues of being selfish. And uh, I can say some of uh, the motorists, they are selfish. And they know exactly, the ex exactly. The, mm -hmm. the levels of compliance are also something that we also need to keep conscientizing the people of Zimbabwe. To say if there is a law, I can give you a good example. One will be on phone, uh, cell phone, driving, but it's very clear that what are the implications, not to yourself, but to the other users of the road. So what we are saying is the element of preaching awareness, good news, sort of an echo. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do concur that we might have the good infrastructure, but at the end of the day, we need users who uphold the spirit of Ubuntu. That's where your toll-free yes. number comes in yes, as well. Exactly. Where people should report exactly. bad driving. But however, it then comes back to the minister to say, we need to continue having this program to raise awareness, to say, yes, let's take ownership of our roads. Because at the end of the day, the decision that you then make as a motorist would then impact on the other motorists. So what we are saying here is, let's, yes, develop our infrastructure and also work on our personalities in terms of how we then use the But how do you govern and, personalities, and Honorable and Minister? Those are, those this is where we just need law enforcement mm. officers on the roads, you understand? Mm. Because there's also that emptiness, and dare I say this, I don't want to be quoted, but there was an, a time where offending the roads was definitely met with a fine immediately because there were police officers at every single stop corner, every single main road. There were a lot of roadblocks. But not to know say know we want they, them back, but, but <laughs> no, I'm not saying we want they, them they, back. They, yeah. People complain to say they too much roadblocks in the Correct. That's what I'm yes. saying. I'm not yeah. saying we want them mm. back, but there's got to be somewhere where we can meet mm. halfway mm. between no governance at all mm. and then some kind of law enforcement. Because at this stage, everybody just does what they want mm. to a point where a street kid along Second Street mm. is the one controlling traffic when a traffic light is dead. And auto meet up a drum, auto control our traffic. And the truth is we'll listen because we all want to get from point A to point B. So yes. where are you? Where Actually, are you? you? Know what, Fenico, yeah. uh, a good example that you have cited. We just need one person, uh, those small boys, to, to, to stop at the intersection and give directions. But for us, if the moment you get to an intersection, you know that the first person who has arrived must go first. Why would you need someone then to start redirecting one person? So then it comes back to the issues of, uh, of uh, selfishness that we and, talked about. And back to the Highway yeah. Code, Honorable Minister, yes. let's it's talk clear, about the corruption at VID. Yes. Because some people are getting licenses and they don't deserve licenses. You, you right? They haven't even read the Highway Code, but they have bought a driver's license. What are you doing about that? The systems, and once again, I'm here about the Second Republic in terms of the, uh, the, the, the approach to issues of corruption. Mm -hmm. There is no tolerance for corruption at all. And I can give you, we have actually moved to speed in trying to to, to digitize some of the, uh, the systems that we have. A good example at, at VID, you know, one would get a license home in terms of the provision, but now we are saying it has to be electronic, mm -hmm. where you sit, you put your credentials, and then 15 minutes, you're done. So these are some of the initiatives that we are actually implementing. And I'm happy that we are moving with speed, and ta we've targeted one VID every month so that we open to one and we, yes, so that we, we then, um, and recently we've just opened Rishavani, we'll be going to Marondera. So these are some of the initiatives so as to curb the issues of corruption. Okay, another tweet here from God Knows Chera. He says, my question will be, why is it that some towns are not amicable to allow companies to assist them to fix roads? For example, I'm informed Mimosa wanted to assist Rishavani Council, but instead they demanded payment to be assisted. What is the policy saying? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Marveniko. 
once again, I talk of the, the triple P's, mm. the, the public-private partnerships. Right. We are saying, uh, Comrade Emerson Dambuzum Nangagwa, once again, is advocating for the, for the private sector-driven economy mm. to say, let's work together. Mm. And if you then see such a noble cause and someone stopping such a noble cause, that's why the minister is here and I can actually say, if you have such impediments, we need to know. If you then find someone who is willing to partake in the rehabilitation of our roads, we, we are actually grateful and we want such a... Um, uh, Where course. should they go? What's the easiest the, the, channel? The, the ministry, they've got, like in this case, yes. it could be a road that falls under the DDF, it could mm. be a road that falls under the uh, rural, uh, district council. So at the end of the day, we need to ascertain which road is, is this that, the, that is being talked about. They can and, start with coming to you maybe, to the they, ministry. If they are not happy, they can come to us because okay. at the end of the day, we know who, who owns this road and that. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we are accountable. Okay. So I'm saying in order to manage the issues of bureaucracy, mm -hmm. the minister is there. Mm -hmm. We are open okay. and we want to hear such concerns. And I want to thank uh, my, my brother for highlighting that, yes. to say let's have uh, right-minded people doing the, at times if you then go you then find that is one person who is just stopping mm. the progress so we don't want such elements in our society we then want to say if resources are then availed by private sector that's a welcome uh, development yes. we will then move with speed to implement so as we move from road travel um how much money does zinara make per month uh that one it depends uh, uh if i then give you a specific figure mm. But what I want to actually highlight to say now with the, the, the new uh, monetary policy in place to say they are now collecting in RTGS in US dollars and mm. which is a welcome development. Mm. But now they are on a sound footing. Mm. They, it's a vibrant business model which they are actually using and they are in a sound uh, financial position. The more you say that, the more we expect them to deliver. Yes, they have to Do you know deliver. what I mean? Because yes. now we've just, mm. I believe, re-engaged the DBSA loan. Mm. And uh, you are confident, I read that you said, we are going to be able to pay back this time. Mm. And one of the reasons why we could not pay back was because of the multi-currency yes. issue, where we were struggling to meet the demand because people were paying in, in, in RTGS. Mm. So you feel that you're confident now, that if we are paying in both US dollars and RTGS, we can manage this time yes. to, to service the loan. Mm. In terms of managing uh, the loan, now they can actually budget. And once again, thanks to the Second Republic for stabilizing the currents. Mm -hmm. uh, unlike in the previous era, where you would not plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. And we are saying now, if they then collect, they can actually focus their collections. And they will be in a position to, uh, to approach any lender mm -hmm. with a solid repayment plan. Mm -hmm. To say, we anticipate to collect so much, because they know what they collect. Mm -hmm and we are in a position to service. And you have highlighted the DBSA loan, mm -hmm. which I'm grateful that it was quite topical from what we then was advanced to the nation and what we've paid. And now we are on track. I can give you a good example. From January, Zenara has paid almost 14 million US dollars. And that's coming from mostly toll gates. It's, uh, we've got toll gates, which is the, the arrangement that was there. Okay. And yes, why uh, are our toll gates so congested? What are we missing? What, what you also need to understand yeah. is the volumes of our, of our traffic in terms of the vis-a-vis -vis the infrastructure that we used to have. So what we are saying is, we say we have got a uh, tolling system, we are collecting one million, and they must see the one million being translated to the provision of service. That's exactly all people so want. this yeah. is what we are saying. And if you then have that scenario, you will not have questions to say, where is our money? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I do agree with you to say if we then collect, we also need to, it has to mirror in terms of the service provision. Correct. And this is what we are saying. This is why the Second Republic is here. So back still on trust, an um, issue that we must mention is tenders, right? Mm -hmm. um, somebody even wrote on Twitter saying, I don't really care mm -hmm. who does the road, mm -hmm. okay? Whether mm -hmm. the tender is done above board or not, what we want is a road that works. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about this and even the urban tolling system, all the service delivery ultimately comes from somewhere, mm -hmm. whether it's under government and again through tenders. Tell us about how you're going to do that better in terms of the public court of opinion, mm -hmm. where they believe that tenders are handed to specific people each time. Mm -hmm. Some of them fail to complete mm -hmm. their tasks. Mm -hmm. Some of them um, you know, don't even show where the money went and they just disappoint. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing differently, Honorable Minister, regarding tenders to make sure that the service is delivered to the people? Uh, you know what, Ruveniko, with the promulgation of, uh, of legislation in terms of the tenders, mm -hmm. the Procurement Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, PRAS, mm -hmm. We now have guidelines mm -hmm. to see 
how you then go to tender. And it's very clear that uh, contrary to that or before that, we used to have the state procurement board mm -hmm. where you'd hear stories. But we are saying with the advent of the PRAS now in place, each ministry has got guidelines on how they do procurement. And then they have to, to, to be uh, quite clear and be focused in, in terms of approaching the tenders. And I'm happy to say the adjudication process is very clear so that whoever goes to tender, and if you are disgruntled, you've got a right to then appeal to say, how was this adjudicated? Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we are saying, this is a process that we also need to adhere to. And above all, we've got monitoring and evaluation, which is another major milestone that came as a result of the Second Republic. Mm -hmm to say we need to monitor and evaluate our projects. Where we pay, we need to make sure that we pay for a service that has been rendered. Mm -hmm. Unlike a scenario where one would just be given a contract, they get paid. And, sure. But so we are saying in terms of moving forward, mm -hmm. we, the monitoring evaluation, the policy that has been constituted, that is to take charge in terms of uh, superintending over the projects that we are doing. Okay. So we are saying this is a development that we must uh, welcome. To say what we pay, we need to monitor it so that we're not just paying for short details. Okay. So, so now, now, like I said, said congratulations, congratulations on the Turkish deal. deal. Um, that, that is exciting. And uh, so, so we, we are looking at about um, a 250 million budget allocation from Treasury to refurbish about 2,700 kilometers of rail countrywide. Um, are, are we looking more at um, rail for transportation for people, or are we looking at rail in terms of more for goods? Uh, it's a twofold uh, venue. But you find that the major essence of rail is to then offload the burden from the roads to the rail, which is in terms of moving the tonnage. Mm -hmm. But you've seen that of late, some of uh, the, the, the laws that were supposed to be channeled towards the rail are coming through the road, therefore damaging our roads. Mm -hmm. But I can say, yes, the larger part of the rail system is then to, to do the connectivity in terms of moving the cargo away from the roads and also the element of um, the passenger it's also a welcome development to then have the passenger element coming into play but what we are saying now is the issues of nrz there are also legacy issues there mm -hmm. but uh, i'm also happy that some of these initiatives are there to resuscitate the operations of nrz and you've talked about uh, the two points and in particular is about 2760 in terms of the total kilometer yeah rail uh, network that we have. But we are saying the moment we start uh, moving and also upgrading the rolling stock, but the rolling stock is what we then feed on wheels on the rail. We then see that these are some of the initiatives, right? And I've also mandated the board to then move with speed to say we need a vibrant rail system in this nation. And these are some of the initiatives. And uh, once again, I think the Second Republic engagement, re-engagement. And others would ask why take it? But we are saying <laughs> The engagement, re-engagement, we are open and the, the ambassador for Turkey was quite instrumental and uh, from our ambassador and then the Turkey ambassador. Mm -hmm. So we are saying these are some of the initiatives that we are saying if we then find those countries that are willing to work with us, that's a welcome development. Mm -hmm. And we are saying if they have the expertise on such and in particular the issues to do with rail management systems, that's something that is a welcome development. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying these are some of the initiatives that We've mandated the board to move with speed, and it's a hunting ground, uh, Reveneko, mm -hmm. where you need to, to make sure that you continue hunting, you continue running, so that at the end of the day, you, you resuscitate uh, uh, the, the systems. Okay, and lastly, air travel, okay? Um, SADC has uh, COMESA. We've got so many things that we uh, are celebrating. We're also celebrating the Africa Free Trade Continental mm -hmm. Area. We're looking at, um, you know, the there's most recently the Kazungula Bridge, mm -hmm. which we can also benefit from. Mm -hmm. But in terms of air travel, when is Air Zimbabwe going to be back in the air and in full capacity again? Thank you very much. And I can uh, proudly say that we are back on the skies, uh, Rveneko. Is something that you have been asking to say when, when, when. Yes. But now I'm I I in the current <laughs> state to say, yes. if you witness on the 2nd of June, mm. uh, we were our maiden trip, the triangular yes. issue. The Harare, the Harare Vic Falls, yes. Yes. It shows that we, we are serious. But if you look at other jurisdictions, they've grounded their fleet in terms of one, because of the pandemic, uh, which has actually really impacted negatively. Mm. Uh, world over but we are saying we are back and this coming week on the 6th now i'm very precise on dates 
on the 16th, we are actually flying. We are also doing our Harare job recruit. And we are not ending there, Rufeniko. Mm -hmm. We are, have actually lined up so that we'll then do Beijing, we'll then reintroduce the London trip. Wow. And we've got the machine, the, the, the machinery in place as we speak. Wow. If you then go to our, to our inventory, we've got the 777 which is now in the loan preservation mode. It's there if you go at uh, the airport. We're just waiting so that we then continue. But I'm glad to say we now have the, the, uh, the permit to fly into Jobek, as we speak, it's on the 16th. Yeah, yes, so, so that, yes, so that, yes, so yeah. these are some, and you then see our colors right in the, in the sky, which is which is a pride of this. Yeah, nation. and if you talk of London and Beijing on the horizon as yes. well, that is very good news. I remember when we were little. Remember we used to go to the airport and watch the airplanes take off um, on the balcony there until they had disappeared. So that's very good news. Um, I think this um, really also then coincides with the development at the airport. I know recently when the press having toured and seen the you know, latest developments, and I believe we are on track for June 2022. Yes to um, officially open the new RGM uh, airport, correct? Yeah, definitely. All right. Yes. No, good. We're happy with that. I mean, look, I think um, the other thing as well is there's stories while we're on air travel that um, some flights are, are, tr are flying through our skies undetected. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about our satellite navigation system? Because that is a concern. And who is flying undetected into our country and out of our country? Are they <laughs> smuggling ivory? Are they, you know, siphoning gold? What's happening? You know what, uh, Rebeneko? I always say to the fourth estate to say, this is our beautiful country, Zimbabwe. Yeah. Yeah. What we then report, even if you then take you to the biblical Caleb and Joshua, where they were, go were sent to spy, others of uh, those team, they actually came there, they were seen the giants were just like grasshoppers in there. But Caleb and Joshua said, no, this is a wonderful nation where we can tap into the resources that we found. But you find that uh, during the, the, the issues of reports that we get from the fourth estate, mm -hmm. Not to say everyone from the fourth state, but we then decide to choose some of the stories that do not give impetus to the nation. We are saying at the end of the day, these are some of the issues. How can you then say we don't see planes coming into our country? Then that is a security threat. It is a but, security threat. I'm telling you that there is no such a, a case where we can allow our airspace to be, to be invaded. That's so a, that is untrue. That's, yes, that's it's something. peddled. Yes. So what we are saying is we are then improving. One of the major milestones of this expansion project is the, the advanced air navigation systems that we are putting at the National uh, International Airport, RGM. Those are the systems to then address the, and allay the fears that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. So we see each uh, plane, or whether it's small or big, that comes into our airspace, we see and we know. So there is no way we would then say, allow someone to say, we have got uh, planes that we are missing. That's yeah. not true, Reneko. Yeah. But like I indicated that social media, yes, it has got pros and cons. And these are some of the, the, cons. the cons that... that so this is a about. misrepresentation. Yes, yes. Yeah. So let's also have the spirit of being Zimbabweans, Reneko. It's also my humble plea mm -hmm. to say some of this. I can just give you a good example. Of, so, uh, recently, there was a railway line that was actually removed uh, by Transnet in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And someone was saying in Janjiabi was Zimbabwe. But you then find someone who wrote at this in Anjanji. But this is not true. So we are saying as much as we use the social media, let's also try to preach good news about our country. Mm -hmm. And congratulations on the dry port. Mm -hmm. I think that's also something to celebrate while we look at milestones and things that will change livelihood. Okay, the Trans-Kalahari Corridor to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. I think um, this is something that young people as well need to look at in terms of opportunities mm -hmm. um, and not highlight the threats mm -hmm. um, because this is something that I, I think um, I saw you in the news and very proud about. Um, so, so congratulations to you and your team for that as well. Yeah. Let's be that great house of stone. That Zimbabwe. Infrastructure determines our world-class city status. Is our foundation strong? The bricks that we are building our country with, are they strong enough to hold up our growing population and all our land, air and sea needs? Let's walk, ride, drive and fly. Ngati fambe, ngati chove, ngati chikaire, ngati bururuke. Asambeni, as choveni, as chaileni, as papeni.